Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. The other day, I woke up middle of the night and opening my eyes, everything was shades of grey. But as soon as I turned the light on, well, apart from getting shouted at by the wife, everything bursts into glorious colour. So I was laid there and I was thinking to myself, why do we only see shades of grey? Why don't we see the colours but very muted? And so I thought, well, let's go and investigate this. So off I went. The first thing I looked at was actually the eye itself. And it turns out to be a simple but complex structure. I love these things where they're simple and complex at the same time. The front of the eye, we've got the cornea. This it acts like a lens and it bends the light as it comes into the eye. Behind this, we've got the pupil. That's the black opening that allows light into the eye. The pupil itself is surrounded by an iris. That's the coloured part of your eye. And the iris adds like a muscle to open and close the pupil. In bright light, the iris, it will narrow down the pupil. And in dim light, it widens the pupil. This is all about controlling the amount of light that is entering the eye. At the back of the eye, we've got the retina. And this, it's covered in photoreceptors. These, they're where the light is converted into electrical signals that are then sent to the brain. There are two types of photoreceptors. There's the rods and there's the cones. The cones, they're generally in the centre of the retina. And these are the photoreceptors that are responsible for your colour vision. The rods, they're generally around the outer edge. And they're what are responsible for your black and white vision. The rods, they're 500 to 1,000 times more sensitive than the cones. And this is what allows for night vision. Humans, we've got about 6 million cones and 120 million rods. The photoreceptors, they work by capturing photons of light and then they convert it into a signal that the brain can understand. Each photoreceptor contains a photoreceptor protein and this is a combination of photopsin, that's what's used in day vision, rhodopsin, that's used in night vision, and retinol. When a photon enters one of these photoreceptors, the retinol, it undergoes an irreversible change in its shape. This alteration in shape, that triggers a physiological process that results in vision. The retinol, it then gets recirculated to the liver, and that's where it's broken down and it gets recreated in its unactivated state, so that can then go back to the eye and into one of the receptors. It takes about 45 minutes for all of the retinol in the eye to pass through this cycle. But most of the night vision adaptation, well, that recycles in about five minutes, so that's fairly quick. The rhodopsin in the rods, that's a protein responsible for night vision, that's insensitive to the longer wavelengths of red. And this is why people are able to use red light to preserve their night vision. Now, that isn't to say that the rhodopsin is not affected by the red light, it's just that the rate of depletion is very much slowed. The use of red light, it may not be as effective in people who are red-green colorblind. Animals, they've got an additional part of their eye called the tapetum lucidum. And hopefully I haven't just mangled that pronunciation. This, it's used to reflect light that's already in the eye back to the retina. And that, together with larger eyeballs, larger lenses, larger pupils and more rods, it helps them to see better in the dark. Our night vision, it does vary between different people. And it's also affected by things like your age, your health and the health of your eyes. It's also worth remembering the rods, they're mainly in the outer part of the retina. So when you're trying to see in the dark, it's worth using your peripheral vision, you know, your side vision, because that should detect a little bit more than what you see through the center. To have night vision, you do need to have some ambient light available. If you're ever lucky enough to go into a cave, once you're deep inside, turn off all the light, turn off all the torches. The darkness, it's just purely impenetrable. Your night vision doesn't work because there's no light at all to assist it. Now, I did that, oh, I want to say I was about 16 when I went into a cave and did that. Really interesting. It is possible for you to improve your night vision. If you want to do that, like every other skill, it requires practice 
and you need to have repeated exposure to low light environments so you can train your vision and work to improve it. I found this topic really interesting. As I said earlier, it was one I was laid in bed and it just popped into my mind. Quite often, that's some of my best ideas come from that. Also some of my worst ones, but we'll never worry about that, will we? Have you got any topics you'd like me to cover? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.